Cat Flap Chats uh, back again. Uh, I've lost count of what episode this is now, actually. Just been in lockdown for about 85 million months. Uh, but this week we've got um, one of Glamorgan Cricket's finest, Mr. William Billy Root. How are you, pal? How are you getting on? Hi, mate. All good. How are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. Very well. Um, we always, uh, to be fair, we've been out for beers before, so... Uh, we, we normally have a beer every episode, so I've got um, I've got a little Cali Pale Ale today, a little tiny rebel from the uh, from what they sent through. What have you got today, mate? I've got a COVID. Uh, with oh. <laughs> so. You got the lime as well, Corona and lime. Good man, mate. You you are a lager man, aren't you? Uh, I, to be honest, mate, um, I'm happy with anything. Um, I'll try everything. You know, I, I enjoy having a look at different different beers, different ales. So I'll try to everything, and then what I like, I always seem to go back to a light beer. With that's the way forward. Then, um, what's what's life like at the moment, pal? Cheers, and what's uh, yeah, what's life like at the moment, mate? What's lockdown like? I mean, for anyone in our profession, it's it's going to be frustrating because it, it came at a time where we just finished a long... Since November, we've been working so hard indoors. We were just about to get outside and go to Spain for a pre-season trip, and that got cancelled. And then we went into lockdown, and we've missed a, a large chunk of the season now. So it's frustrating that it just feels like we've had a like almost 10 month pre-season <laughs> <laughs> yeah and how much training can you do at home at the moment obviously you know you're not there with other batsmen or the bowlers practicing in that sense what can you do i mean from a skills perspective just really really basic skill you know um stuff i do as a kid you know little drop feeds or hitting against the water catching against the water just to keep you sharp but Mainly, it's just the the fitness aspect that I've got. I can really keep on top of here. I'm, I'm lucky where I live. I've got some really good places to just nip out and you know run down by the river or over the. There's a flood route we've got here, which is it's quite testing. So there's a lot I can do physically here, but it, you know, as a in a in a sport that's very skill based, it, it's quite frustrating. Yeah. There's only stuff we can do. How many overs has your missus bowled to you now? <laughs> yeah, she'll be she'll be getting a stress fracture soon. I <laughs> <laughs> What's her action like? Any good? Yeah, she'd probably be um, sent up to Loughborough and have a look at it like mine was. <laughs> I was going to come. You, I, I was going to come on to that. You got banned by the ECB for your bowling action, didn't you? Yeah. What, what happened Illegal there? Bowling. On really, I mean, I reported about three or four years ago, I think. Yeah. And then it was really an issue because I didn't really bowl that much. And then I started bowling more and I started doing all right. So I'm getting a few important wickets. And then all of a sudden, I've been reported again but by the same umpire that reported me three or four years ago. Screw it. So then I went, had to go and take a test where there's all these probes and stuff to measure yeah. the degree. Oh. So I went and did that, and I think I bought one, what one or something that was over fifteen degrees, and that was it. Of all the ones you bowled, yeah, yes, well, eighteen or something like that. And I think I did one that was was over. That's mad. That so, is, that's yeah, fucking, that's crazy, mate. So, um, take us back to the beginning, pal. Obviously, you grew up in Sheffield, is that right? I was, yeah. I was a lad from Sheffield. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was predominantly a football town with the with, with the two teams. How did you get into cricket, and uh, what was the what was the uh, pathway into that? Well, my, my granddad used to play back yeah. in back in the day. He always keeps telling us about, and um, <laughs> and then I guess my dad took it up. And we and then from there, me and my brother and a few mates growing up with, we used to go down and watch them every every Saturday. They played in yeah. the national league. Uh, so the Yorkshire League and the, and the National Knockout, they were quite 
quite good in that every year. They had a decent run. So we travelled a lot with the team and, and just got to know the players really well and, and, and just loved it playing on the sidelines ourselves. And I guess we just sort of fell into it that way. Yeah. And obviously you, you, you and your brother as well, uh, Joe. What, uh, what age were you guys when you started playing properly? And did you play other sports as a kid as well? Yeah, we played pretty much every sport we could, really. I mean, we still play golf now, but I, I used to play, we used to play rugby as well. And because my dad was a big rugby player. He played league yeah. and union. Yeah. So he was mad for that. So he sort of pushed us into everything and, and we made our decision. My brother was a good tennis player. Yeah. And up until quite recently, I played, I played hockey. I played National League hockey for a good two or three years. Okay. So, so jack of all trades then. Yeah. Yeah. And when when did you for you guys sort of growing up, when did you start to think of cricket as um uh, maybe maybe not a hobby, but maybe not quite a career path yet where you had to choose actually I can't do football today because I've got cricket, you know? Yeah, there there were times when when that decision had to be made, I mean, it's certainly for my brother, who was getting good at tennis. He, he was playing for Nottingham Forest Academy <laughs> at twelve, I think, and then yeah. got to the point he, 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 I think he would rather play cricket, or he thought himself that he better cricket than he was at football, which turned out to be a fantastic decision. Yeah. But I mean, he could have gone the other way. He's a good football player. What position um, is he? So he, he, so he play either sort of in the midfield or he'd play up top. He was a good goal scorer. Nice. And then, so that, that decision sort of, it just happens. You just choose one, I guess. And yeah. uh, we, we chose, chose to play cricket. I mean, going into sort of Yorkshire under 12s, the pair of us, and then sort of moving on from there. I myself sort of fell out of that team. And then, yeah. I got my way back in by by playing in the in the Yorkshire League that I'd spent all my youth watching my dad play in. I'm playing actually a game against my brother, yeah. and uh, his and doing well against them. And then from that, I got asked to play for the academy, and then I played against Ireland a couple of weeks after. I got a hundred, and then next thing I know, I'm I'm playing in the second team at the age of sixteen. <laughs> Well, what's that like? Because you obviously that's men's cricket, and you're not a man at 16, no matter what anyone says. You think yeah. you might, you know, some people might think I probably thought I was a big boy at 16, knew it all, played a bit of rugby, but you're not a man. Like, what, what's that like going in there as a kid? I mean, you, 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 when you're 16, you are bulletproof. <laughs> you're playing against under 16s, and you and you smack everyone around it, and your, your confidence is just sky high, and then yeah. you turn up. And you play in the game against a bloke that's played for New Zealand, a bowler that's played for for Nottinghamshire for 150 games or 200 games, and it's your first second team game, and you're just so used to smacking everyone about. You turn up, and it's a completely different game. It's like <laughs> a different sport, yeah. You know, and, and no one's nice to you, and it's just, you know, whether you're 16 or. 35 playing your first or last game. If someone's tough on the pitch, they're tough on the pitch. Yeah. So you're hearing things you've never heard before. You're facing <laughs> seen skills you've never seen before. Yeah. Bowling screws you've never seen before. So it, yeah, it is like you say, just a completely different environment going from kids cricket, which it is, to this is professional cricket now. We've got guys that have played best cricket. How do you out? How did you cope with that at 16? What's, uh, how, how did you take those steps to be able to stay at that level? I get, I just soaked up the, the changing room environment and just watched how a few of the guys went about it. Um, in, that, in my first game, that game, I, I, my brother got picked to play for England in the 19th or summer, that summer. So I went and played in his play, in his place. So in my first game, I would have loved to have hit for him to have been there, but he had other commitments. So I just had to sort of go in there and and have a look around and take what I could from other guys that I, 
A, that welcomed me well. Some guys, you know, if you're new into a team like that, they, they weren't so welcoming. Because the <laughs> second team environment can be yeah. quite ruthless. Yeah. Because essentially everyone's playing for a spot in the first team. So Yeah. But also it's a team sport, so you get you get a lot of guys that just love only want to do well and you get others that don't. So sort of learning that lesson quickly was big for me and it's just it was just sort of going, right, these guys are good. How good let's have a look how good I can be. Yeah. And that was my attitude. There wasn't it wasn't oh I'm, I'm, I don't belong here. I just thought, well, if I if I think like that then I've got no chance from the start. Is is cricket one of those? So, like you know, when I played rugby growing up, and even you see players now, obviously it was quite a boozy culture. Probably more so ten years ago. Was cricket like that when you were growing up? And did you have much of like a childhood around that, where you know you're getting drunk in the park with your friends or anything like that, or was it very much we're focused on sport and this is the way we want to go? In this, is my mindset. Yeah, I mean, it is a very social game, especially it was back then, or more so back then. Yeah. Um, but I guess. You know, I, my first beers would have been like a cheeky half down the cricket club after one of my dad's games. <laughs> yeah. When the, when, the, when the bloke down the bar who was mates with them or wasn't looking or wasn't looking. Yeah. And other than that, we, we just, every Saturday, that's what we did. We went down and we just played all day. So, yeah. That was, that was our focus, really. When did it start becoming a career for you? It, when I when I played that game against Ireland in the academy, yeah. they plucked me out of the league and put me in the academy, and I got hundred against Ireland. I thought, right, okay, I can play here. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put everything into this now. And what's the path? What's the path? Is the pathway changed much from then to now? Was that ten years ago? Is it still much the same, or how, how does that work? Yeah, well, mine was. I, I did a really tough way because. I then went to school on a cricket scholarship in uh, in workshop, and uh, that was quite a long way from to Leeds, so it was tough for me to get the places. and And I got um, it was a sort of a Saturday fixture and a Wednesday fixture, so the academy two day games for Yorkshire would have been Tuesday, Wednesday. And then the Saturday would have been when the academy played on Saturday. So I was missing a lot of academy stuff and only really playing second team stuff when school term had finished. Yeah. So I wasn't getting that many opportunities. And there was a lot of other good, good players playing well at that time. So I was the one that was missing opportunities. So inevitably, I was the one that sort of got pushed aside. And at the end of that season, me and my dad sat down and, and we decided, you know, let's go somewhere else. And look for look for another a gig somewhere else. So I went out of Worcester and did pretty well. Yeah, really, did really well there actually. But then the, the the nothing came about that. We never heard anything back. They sort of said uh, you've done well for us. You've really great stuff so far, and we we'll look forward to seeing you next season. Um, I've heard you go. So I went to Australia that winter and played pretty well over there. And, I was looking forward to going back to Worcester, and then just the phone never rang. How, how does it? How does that work in terms of just going down to Australia to play or finding your own club? Because obviously, you look at scouting systems in rugby or football, or if you know someone or whatever. How does that work in cricket? Because it's not something I've ever seen sort of behind the scenes of. Yeah, it's exactly that, mate. If you know someone, or you can go through a. Nowadays, people go through agencies, which sort of okay. They're a middleman and they can find, depends what they're after, I guess. But I don't really know too much because I haven't used it. Yeah. What was Australia like? How old were you then? I was 18 when I went there. That was was a real eye-opener on on the field, you know. Yeah. Off it, it was great. I learned a lot. (laughs) (laughs) Became a man. Uh, On the field. like the way Australians are compared to even that sort of baptism of fire as a 16 year old playing against the test players. Yeah. Even that, like hearing things, I was like, oh, that's a bit, oh, never mind. This is tough, this. And then I went to <laughs> Australia and 
it's it, completely different game because then as soon as they know you're English, they're, they're after you. Yeah. Every time I went to bat in Australia, it, every single time, it, half the blokes are just going for you. Is that is that for English? Do they, is it first grade cricket or first class first grade that, cricket? That was, that was that was first grade cricket. Yeah. Um, yeah. Their their system it's very difficult for overseas players to go over there because they've only got eight teams. Yeah. And they got to they they've got so many players that they got to get. You know, yeah, develop yeah. from Australian cricket, which is makes so much sense. Yeah, of course. It, a lot of professional cricketers from here go over and play first grade and it's it's a good standard. Yeah. Because they've got so many good players and only eight teams. It just filters down naturally. Yeah, grade cricket's really strong. Yeah. And it, it, as soon as you're English and you go over there, everyone's after you. And, and that, <laughs> that was, it was a really good thing for me that as well because it, it makes you tough. Yeah. How do you, yeah. how, where, where in Australia were you? I went to Brisbane. Oh, I've not oh, been Brisbane. Brisbane. Bris Vegas. I've not been uh, not been up that way. What's um how long were you there for? Just sort of four months, is it? Five months? Six, six months. I, I would have to full because I wasn't um I wasn't sort of tied to Yorkshire or, or Worcester where my bed off me anything at that point. Yeah. I, I had no reason to go back early. A lot of people go back in March for pre season, but I had no, no reason to decide in the full six months, full season. Yeah. Loved it. Best. And then went to join. I went to the, that at that point. I went to because I'd heard from Worcester. I went to join the MCC Young Cricketers in London. Lived down okay. there too. What was that like? That was mega as well. I learned a lot about drinking and a little bit about batting. <laughs> um, yeah, that was that was really good actually because again, you we we're, we're training at Lords, which is it, that's like. The Vatican City of cricket. Yeah, of course. Incredible. And when there's test matches on, we're we're twelfth man duties or we're on the covers or we're bowling out in the net. So Yeah. Again, for that week you're you're almost part of the squad. You know, we, the guys are so good with you. Advice everywhere, especially yeah. when you're putting out and the bowlers and just having chats and stuff. And that that week's incredible, and it really gives you that hunger to sort of crack on and work really hard, and 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 you know, hopefully try and get there one day. Yeah. Who was in the England team then? In the, my second year there was my brother's first year. Okay. So that's Which nice was, as well. Then you obviously got someone that you know there properly as well. Yeah, that was his first Ashes, and he, he scored a hundred and at Lords and yeah. eighty. And I was doing twelfth man that 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 week and I broke my thumb on the morning after he got it was on 180 and I, was, I had to go for a scan and and it was cooked and they so they had to put the um the the what's it called the, the plate or the cast yeah it was like a little little plate but I yeah. had then a splint. And then they, numbed, they numbed it all. A little splint, yeah, that's it. Yeah. They numbed it all. And then I went back to watching. I said, oh, I need to go back and watch him get to 200 here because he's going to. Yeah. So went back. This thing's throbbing like you won't believe. Went back. Just got onto the balcony to watch. And then, boom, it's in the air. It gets caught. First ball I watched. <laughs> so then I got to go walk back around the inside of the pitch. Yeah. The back gates. Back to the hospital to get it straightened out. Oh, Ooh. that's agony. I should have. I, I should have done. I should have done. Just just watched on telly. <laughs> yeah. What was that like uh, seeing your brother get his first uh, hundred? It was amazing. I mean, because the two of us from such a young age have been at it for so long. Like on a Saturday every day, and put so much time in to see him get an Ashes hundred and to be there fielding in the game was it was really special for not just for me for all the whole family how does that work with um to te- to, you don't get it's not a cap is it you being 12th man away but technically you've been in an england no. kit o- on the pitch at the time how does yeah. that work with the 12th man uh i guess they just um well in the english summers when 
there's England series on, there's also county championship games. Yeah. So invariably, the squads that don't, the guys that don't get into the eleven on the morning yeah. after the coin toss when the team's been announced, they'll be released back to the counties. So it'll be okay. either a second team player or, in the case of Lords, the young cricketers. Yeah. Would then do the roles of twelfth man. But that baffles me that you could go on the pitch, you could not have got in the second team, yet you're on the pitch at England dropping a catch maybe or something. That baffles me. Yeah. Well, when they played New Zealand, I, Ian Bell was ill. So I hadn't played a first-class game at this point. And, I've, <laughs> and he's ill, so I've got a field the whole day. Yeah. So I pretty much did a day and a half. <laughs> So by the, like, halfway through the second day of that, like, 30 or 28,000 people are treating me like one of the players. Like, it was normal. <laughs> like, the first, the first over, you normally go on while someone has, just nips off for a piss or something. So yeah. you're, like, you're on for one, one over and you're not going to get the ball. No, it's not going to happen. But when you're doing a day and a half, it's starting to come to you a lot. And yeah. like, that first throw, if you, if you get that first throw wrong, <laughs> people. When it's coming towards you, they go, oh, shit. <laughs> so I got the first one away and I thought, right, I'm just going to absolutely think this because if it drops short, I'm going to get bollocking from the wicketkeeper and the crowd are going to go my back. So yeah. Absolutely whizz this thing over the top. And luckily it was just like spot on. And after that, everything else was fine. Like, yeah. Easy. You could get that there's 28,000 people left. After that, what is your mental. what is your mindset when you go out to bat or even go out to field, or whatever? Do, do you hear the crowd? Because the cricket crowds are always really close, obviously to the to the boundary. And normally, mm. like I I did, I can't remember where we went. I edge bastard, maybe or whatever when we were in school. But that was a teachers had a few beers. I think we snuck a few beers because we were in sixth form during the day all day. And then obviously, when you look at the, like the T twenties and Vitality Blast, or even the you know internationals they tend to be fairly social occasions. Can yeah. you hear it? You get, you you get some grounds. Some grounds are worse than others as well. I mean, Ace Blast is <laughs> mental. Ace Blast is mental. Heading Lee, Leeds, they've got a good crowd. Chelmsford and Essex. The Essex crowd's nasty as hell. They are is rowdy. It? Oh, yeah. And in, like, in Leeds, you've got two universities there. Cardiff's the same, but two yeah. universities there. Those beer snakes get big quick. Yeah. Um, but in the longer games, the four-day games, it's like it turns into like a constant murmur as okay. opposed to all the, you know, the, when the 2020s are on, the music's on, and there's, ooh, oh, uh, there's yeah, a lot yeah. more. So it, it's a different atmosphere complete, and it's easier to switch off and on in the championship because that essentially that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to, to have you focus on when you're on and then because you're there for six hours of the day, yeah. you know, the field is holding about in when it's a, a long day sometimes. So yeah. being able to switch off is great. And when you do switch off, sometimes that's when you can take in the crowd. And almost it, when you feel in, it's good to interact with them as well, you know. Yeah. Judge, yeah. Country, nothing's happening. Wind them up, or if they're winding you up, wind them up back, or you know, just give them. <laughs> it just gives it a bit more. What's the worst? What's the worst bit of abuse you've had from the sideline? I had a, I had a cracker. Um, we played in a quarter final against Somerset Taunton. Yeah, and cider everywhere. Right, we we got four hundred. We got four hundred and. 40 odd, I think, in a 50 over game. It was bizarre. Yeah. And we were getting, they were knocking it off. So, like, they're five down, 390 odd or something, with four, five, six overs ago. What, what, how are they going to knock 450 off? Yeah. It's not going to happen. And it is, oh my God, it's going to, it kept flying out the park. <laughs> like, what is going on here? And I've, <laughs> I've jumped over one. I've jumped over one, it's gone for four. The crowd behind me have gone absolutely bonkers. It's the Somerset lot. Oh, so I've gone fetch it. And then I threw it back in. 
71. Number 71. You're shit. <laughs> like, what the hell? And then another bloke. 71. Shit. Right. And then Captain Chris Reed told me to stay out there on the bounty. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I even go back in. So I'm copying this abuse from these two cider swillers. I'm thinking, <laughs> oh my. I'm going to turn around and say something in a minute. And then bulk up because of six. I've gone to like get the ball from whoever it was in the stand that's got it. I've looked up and I've seen 71 is shit. Yeah. Two people there. It was Don Bess and Jack Leach from Somerset. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely pissing himself. <laughs> and then luckily we won and then got back to the change room just about to have a beer. They walked up steaming like bye bye. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, high. that's class. Do you um it was hilarious? Absolutely hilarious. Do you get much because sledging's obviously um big in cricket, especially when you've got the likes of the ashes and uh, England, Australia, and that. Do you get a lot of sledging in sort of the county game or even like the T20 stuff when you're at the at the crease? Get a little bit, um, but I think after a while, I got I got a bit in my first couple of games. You know, people. I, I think people always trying to test you out, test your character out, and you know, yeah. A see if you fight back or and B see if it'll affect your game. But I think usually there's one in every team that will have the white line fever, you know, as soon as he's on that pitch. He's, he could be the nicest guy in the world off it, but when he's on it, he'll say anything to get you out. <laughs> and and, and people, that, people are like that, and you've just got to know how to sort of deal with those guys. It, know, does it go I, too far? You know, I think it always, the umpires now will always step in before it does. But okay. yeah, so every now and then, something does happen, and you just go... You, you, you know, it, it happens in every sport, doesn't it? Yeah, of course it does. Yeah. But then, it, you know, there's points in place and sanctions in place for that sort of stuff. And yeah, I think most of the stuff is is in 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 the contest first and foremost. People are playing tough, but it's in a good spirit as well a lot of the time. Yeah. But cricket. I have a beer after, and it's kind of all forgotten. Then I suppose you exactly. get to. I suppose you get to spend quite a lot of time with other teams, you know, especially during the four day games. And then even with things like the hundred now are actually different people from different teams will come together to form new teams. I suppose you get to know quite a few of the players yeah. around the counties. Yeah. And for me, cause I was trialing so much young cricketers and I'll try a bit Leicester and then, and then trial at not. I played a lot of second team cricket yeah. and a little bit of first team cricket now. In the North Group and the South Group, for not in the North Group, the South Group for De Morgan. So I I know so many guys and so yeah. many that I would happily go for a beer with majority. Yeah, you know, and you get to know so many people now, and 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 you get the, you always go have a beer after and and have a chat, and, and that's what's so good about the game, you know, because it's not as physical, is it? If someone's trying to roll your bouncer, they're yeah. trying to roll your bouncer to, to either get you out or get you to change your tactic. Well, no one's trying to hurt you. Yeah. But I guess in other sports, you know, someone loses their head in football or rugby, it's a, it gets physical and it can be quite ugly. Yeah. How do, um, do you reckon that grounding of having to trial around counties and play a lot of second team cricket is giving you that resilience and that mindset of being able to kind of shake it off, laugh it off and just move on with your own game? Yeah. Definitely. And I think, you know, when I was that bulletproof 16-year-old, yeah, I, I, I was a bit chopsy, you know, and then, <laughs> you know, I was the best in my in my school team at that point, you know, and yeah. and, and the local club side, I was, you know, I, I was whacking it. I was on top of the, on top of the world for under-16 level. And then, yeah. you know, all of a sudden, this baptism of fire comes and you've got test blokes there and you're getting, someone's making you feel this small. You soon learn that that ain't you know. <laughs> there's always going to be someone there that's, that's bigger and harder and, and a little bit better. So yeah, at and that point I decided that I'd just keep my mouth shut and, and work hard. <laughs> to be you know, that's, everyone that's going to wind everyone up. Of course, and how 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 does that affect like 
you, you mean you, you're quite a bubbly character, obviously knowing you from outside this and quite fun. How do you keep that sort of mental, I say mental health, probably not the right term, but how do you keep that mental sort of positivity? And, you know, if you've had a, a shit day at the wicket and, you know, teams lost, you got out for a duck and maybe you're in a bad run of form or whatever, or even like I saw when your brother copped a load of abuse, you know, recently, last year, how do you stay in a positive mindset to get you through and on to the next one? Um, that's a good, it's a good question. Uh, I think for me, it's a case of, you know, in cricket, you have, we will, it's a fact you'll have more bad days than you'll have good days. Yeah. You know, so it's, I guess it is like resilience, you know, knowing that, you know, trusting in yourself enough to know that you're not, you're not far off a good day. And the more, the more consistent you can become, the, the easier that is to yeah. deal with. But it can be, it can be a really low, a low time in, in, in the creek to change room. Personally, if, you, if you're not doing well, but the team's winning, it doesn't make a difference. Yeah. You know, if you're not going so well and, and some guys are flying, you think, you're looking around, questioning your technique, going, why is he doing so well? You know, yeah. if someone's on fire, they're on fire and they're doing it their way. They just see the uh, ball bigger, do they? Yeah, and you, it, it's just a case of trusting your game enough to know that you know next week or tomorrow that's that could be you. You know, if you work, if you believe it's it happens. Yeah. So it, you know, it's it is a mental battle, but it's also you've also got to battle that how you you, you feel about that, and also you're in the team to win for the team. Yeah. But whatever's going on in your game, personally, you've got to yeah. deal with that when you're in the nets or when, when you're in practice. Well, if yeah. you get up and you sit around and sulk while the rest of the team's trying to crack on with their work, you bring in a negative vibe into the changing room. And, yeah. and that ain't a good place to be. A, a, a good changing room is, is one where, you know, whether you've got 200 or you've got naught, you're still sat there helping other guys out, you know. Because if there's... 100 people at the it's fire gardens for a game and we've got two guys grafting their balls off and it's, it's, it's difficult batting conditions. The last thing they want is people sat inside so what, what you need is guys out on the balcony, you know. Even if it's a, a good lead, you know, just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it, it makes a huge difference. So you, whatever personal battles you've got, deal yeah. with them some other time. How do, how does it how is it for you when your natural game, but you've got to play a different way for the team? So you could be, you know, bit of a pinch hit a uh, fifty sixty real quickly, but actually you've just got to block every ball and just not get out. How does that affect? Because it's literally millimeters in terms of in or out. And how how yeah. does that how does that affect you when you're at the crease? I guess I guess that's a mindset thing, you know. I mean and. For for the guys that are gonna are gonna put the team first, that it's it's easier to do because you you know if this is gonna help us win a game, I'm going for that ten times out of ten. If if I, it's gonna benefit me, but there's a chance we we you know it's gonna stop the team from doing well. Let's say if we need if we're pushing for a declaration and I'm on sixty seventy yard, I'm gonna try and get as many as I can quickly and as opposed to trying like nudge it around for a, a hundred to make me look good. Yeah. If it's gonna if it's gonna take an extra hour and there's no point. Let's yeah. Go, let's go be aggressive and put a declaration out and, and try and get them bowled out. Because yeah. that's how you win games. And for me that's the only way. Be being well, able like you say, being able to adapt the different the different situations based on what the team needs at that point. It's it's so important. How do you? What was your top score? Two two nine, wasn't it? So yeah, best score. Who's was, who's that for? That's for Morgan. Glamorgan. It was for Morgan. Yeah. How do you stay alert? Pardon the pun in today's current climate. How do you stay alert for that long? You know, that's a good day, two days batting. How do you? How do you do that? Because mentally, that is exhausting. Uh, yeah. I, you get into this batting, even I think even bowlers will get this every now and then. You know when they're going to bat, 
it's called a zone, and you, you know, someone says he's in, he's got his eye in. Yeah. There are many different, many different takes on that and what that actually means. Some people think it's getting used to the pace of the pitch, or you know, like you said, seeing it well. Some days you're in the zone and it goes beyond seeing the ball bigger or getting used to the pace of the pitch. You just, it's like a feeling where you just ain't getting out. Like, even if you play a bad shot, you don't get out. Your feet will be nowhere. You just throw your hands at something, you hit yeah. the middle and hit, hit the boundary board before you've even looked up. You're like, what? How did that happen? That's called the zone. And, once you're in that, it becomes, it's like a plateau. Your concentration doesn't really, it's bizarre. It happens once every bloody five years, but yeah, it's incredible. It's weird. Because that, that game, you came in, it was 20 for three, so you've had a bad start. Pressure's yeah. obviously on to build a score. And just, I, I can imagine at that point, they'd take 50 or 100, do you know what I mean? Just to keep the scoreboard ticking over, not lose yeah. wickets. Do you feel pressure when you go out? And you were dropped on naught as well. Do you feel pressure? Yeah. I did because when I went in, I didn't lay back on it for first 30 runs and then the zone kicked in. I mean, I'd got dropped first ball. Absolute yeah. beauty of the delivery. I thought, fucking well, the red's that. And then this poor lad's dropped it. I thought, oh my God, that could have been, that could have been 20 for four. And then I guess at that point, I'd sort of, Look, had a little look, got up and sort of checked my technique three or four times, changing, not really changing, but just making sure I, and I was a bit cautious. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I thought, one ball happened and I just blocked it or something. And then it just went, and a summit happened and then everything hit the middle of the bat after that. It was bizarre. It's mad, isn't it? Because it, it, if you could bottle that, and sell it, you'd be one of the richest men in sport. Whatever that is, that zone, that mindset, that high performance, elite, whatever that is, if you could, it would be, you'd make millions. Like, it's mad. I love the mindset and the psyche, actually, away from the physical side of it. It's, it's berserk. Yeah, I mean, oh, and, but that's, that's, that's the majority of it. Class. You know, um, you get guys that are highly skillful, incredibly skillful, but you know, if if you haven't got the, the mindset to, to use it, it's <clears throat> people don't do as well as they should. You know. Talk to me about um, talk to me about your time at Glamorgan, mate. So, has it been two years now? Two years here. This would be my this would be my second year. Yeah. Yeah. What's uh, how have you found it? How have you found Wales? I absolutely love it, mate. It's brilliant. It's such a good club, and Cardiff as a city is great. Yeah. Well, I've moved up out, out of Cardiff now, and I love it here as well. It's a bit quieter in the countryside. Yeah. Um, but it's an incredible country. I love it. And I mean, Glamorgan was such a breath of fresh air for me at the time where, where I was. We were doing well. We won a couple of trophies the year before that. But yeah. I was sort of in and out of the team and I got to sort of 26 years old and I thought, right, it's, it's time for a new challenge and where I can sort of have a bit more of a, a responsibility and Blue Morgan was a great fit at the time and it was the best decision I made. Is, is that one of those things where you angle for the move and you sound Blue Morgan out or did, did they go, oh, speak to his agent, is he interested, we're looking for a batsman of this calibre, blah, blah, blah. It was, was it was almost like fate, really, because so I went, uh, I was at Knotts in the pre-season before I left, when I had yeah. two years left on my contract. I got invited to go on the Tom Maynard Trust winter trip with Matt Maynard, Mark Wallace, um, and then there was Lucas Carey. Roman Walker. So a few of the guys were there and head coach now, who wasn't at the time. Yeah. And director cricket now, who wasn't at the time, were on that trip. And then at the end of that season, I sort of 
they not made a few batter, signings of batters on the last day of the loan deadline, so I couldn't go anywhere on loan. And they obviously put them straight in the team. So I went and had a chat with the coach at the time, and he sort of said, "Look, if I was if I was you, if if you were my like, if you were my son, I, this is the advice I'd give you." Is what he yeah. said. And then he said, "You can you can you can hang around." For now and fight for your spot or we're happy for you to go if, if that's what you want so I went and ch- chatted to the chief exec and he said if that's what you want then that's fine we'll let you go and then the coach called me back in and says by the way you've got to do one more thing for me he says what he says you've got to go play for the second team in, in Cardiff I said well, I've got to drive to Cardiff when you know I'm leaving Yeah. he's like yeah yeah, you have to. And I was like, really? And he's like, yeah, you'll thank me later. So I went down, played all right, got 50, it was a really good pitch. And then I, walk, I was walking past the offices to go have a lunch. Yeah. And I stood in my head and I said to Mark Wallace, who was the PCA, um, working for the PCA as a personal development officer. So yeah. he was looking at you know, the Morgan boys. I took my head in the office and said, it's quite nice this, isn't it? Quite a nice place this, I like it here. Yeah. That sort of thing. And then yeah. a week later, I met with Hugh Morris up in the Belfry and we, we made a plan then. We pretty much had it, everything sorted then. Signed that, signed that week. Class. Have a look back, yes, yeah, all good. Yeah. What's, um, what's your preference, mate, with the terms of the four-day game and, you know, the T20s and even the 100 that's coming now. What's, um, if you had to pick, what would I mean, I enjoy, I enjoy playing in the 2020s the most. You know, you get the best crowds. It's yeah. really exciting. That's the most enjoyable at the time. But, I mean, the, nothing beats the thrill of winning a four-day game. If you've drafted for four days. Yeah. You know, the lads have been in the dirt. You've, you've grinded it out and you've won a four-day game. It's it's a pretty big feeling that. I mean, when we, we won a promotion, the best I've done is win a promotion in, in the four-day in the four-day game. And that, you know, over 16 games, 16 four-day games, it's a real slog. And you, you get, you come real close as a, as a, as a group as well. And it, it, you and you, your mates have, have done it together and, that's an incredible feeling, um, and that. But personally, from a batting perspective, um, my favourite is fifty overs. So for yeah. me, there's a huge case for all of them, and, and I think there should always be a place for all three formats. Did you? Um, are you in? I can't remember if you're in the hundred. Are you in the Glamorgan South Wales? Uh, was it South Wales Fire team or Welsh Fire? No, I, I'm not in the. I'm not in the hundred. Didn't fancy yeah, that. Yeah, but I, I played in the. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's going to take off. I think it's going to be great to watch, especially. So I. I think it should achieve everything. That. That it's got the potential to. I mean, it's, I know it's had a lot of haters. You know, traditional cricket fans are always going to. Yeah. Be, well, but they were for twenty twenty when it started, in two thousand and four. So. Yeah. I think you know as long as people are. Are going to be there to watch what? I mean, you got four overseas players trying to hit, get as many as they can with the rest of the best of the rest in the country, trying to get as many runs as they can in a hundred balls. It's going to be great to watch. So <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to see it and, ho- and hopefully get get involved. Yeah, I suppose you'll be either way. You'll be there as a fan, if not uh, if not part of the team as well. What's Absolutely. um? What do, what do you like away from cricket, mate? Obviously, I know you know you're into golf a bit, but how do you do? You get a lot of downtime with the cricket. Obviously, I suppose with it being summer, that you know that's the best months of the year in terms of going out and having you know fun and holidays and stuff. What do you do away from cricket? Yeah, you get, we get some nice time off, and it, you know, like I said, four day games is tough and it's grueling at times. So. Usually we'll get one or two days off after a game. You know, yeah. if you've won, you can enjoy a beer with the guys. Yeah. Go home, relax. I love to play golf because it just completely takes me away from 
from from playing cricket and the stress of sometimes you know if you're not playing well dealing with those personal battles like I spoke about yeah yeah I can almost have have that time off on the golf course and you know you play golf with guys that get really frustrated because golf is a frustrating game but for me I'm playing golf to get away from playing cricket so yeah. I can really relax on the golf course and I, I love it you know just getting out there and, and not thinking about anything it's great um, I like you know spending time with our lass is always nice as well and where I live it's great to go for a little walk you know and yeah some really nice old school country pubs and just getting out and about and doing stuff keep keep them right especially when the weather's good yeah keeps you keeps your mind fresh and you know keep, keeps you your mind off what what could be quite a, a challenging encounter I suppose where if you know sometimes when it's not going well it can yeah. be a tough as a as a as a player in in a cricket team where you don't get any runs, you've got to sit and watch everyone else do what you want to be doing. So yeah. it can be quite dark, and you you can have these battles with yourself. But you know, ultimately, it's it's a game, and the sun's going to come up the next day, and you're going to get another go at it. Class. Uh, what do you do? You know when. Um... I don't know day three. They're in. They're, you're you're into bat, but either you've batted or you're further down. What do you do in the day? PlayStation or just watch a game? Or because you're there for ten hours a day at the cricket ground. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, you you do. You, there's a lot you do. There's a lot of pissing about to do, especially <laughs> when it rains. Yeah, when it rains. It's the most frustrating. Well, you're there with. 15 blokes. There's so much pissing about to be done. <laughs> Isn't there? Like, the winding each other up is 90% of, of cricket. Yeah. But then when it's go time, it's go time. You know, it's, you've got to switch on. But uh, you, that's what's so good about the Morgan changing room. The yeah. room environment is so good. You know, when it rains... It's great for two hours, three hours. Then it gets a little bit boring because we're there to play cricket. And yeah. But then someone will find something to do. It'll just crack everyone up again. And it's, it, yeah, it, it's frustrating, but it, it can be good fun at times. Class. How was, um, you spoke a lot about uh, your brother through this, not naturally. Um, what's that been like growing up? where he is playing for England and then becoming England captain. And obviously, you know, as with any England cricket team, there are various highs and lows. What's that been like? And you then trying to carve out your own career, if that's the right expression. Yeah, I think, well, that's for me, that's what it's always been. It's been a case of carving out my own career. Yeah. And, you know, as far as being being a, a brother goes is you know if he needs to chat to me about something that's going on with him then I'm going to be here, here for that and if he if he's if I need some help or if I need to chat to him about something he's going to be there it's the same with any brothers I guess but yeah uh, also while I've been doing my own thing a lot of the time I've been just as much a fan as everyone else because yeah. most of the games are in the in the summer and we're busy so I'm watching it just like everyone else yeah with, with, with a lot more pride mind but yeah I, I get I get the to watch the games and as, as a fan as well which is yeah. it's been really nice to see his career go the way it has because I've seen how hard he worked yeah it's um I would say and I, I don't know this but I would say that just knowing you and seeing you you almost take his criticism, put maybe even worse than your own criticism, because you can do something about your own criticism and you almost laugh it off a little bit and get on with what you do. But you t- you take his to heart almost. It seems. Yeah, it's funny you say that because that is so true. I've never really thought about that. You know, I guess it's because he he gets more. I see more of it. Yeah. Just because he's a bigger profile, naturally, in terms of yeah, the England captain? I, I guess 